Hello educators and welcome back to our Ask an AE series where we answer your questions on all things MasterCAM. Today we're tackling part two of our expose on stock models and use scenarios. In the last video, we covered simple single part multiple setup flow. Wayne Schwartz had additional questions on how to deal with stock properly when we have multiple physical setups or machine groups, tombstones, and other advanced manufacturing scenarios. Let's dive into MasterCAM and explore. What I have here is a drive sprocket off a Formula SAE race car. And I've got a multiple vice setup that I want to execute in my Haas VF2. Now, unlike the last video where we talked specifically about single part multiple fixture flow, here I truly have multiple copies of the part geometry in multiple different setups and I want to manipulate them in different ways and I always want to see them on the screen at the same time. So what I'm going to talk about will apply to multiple vice setups um, and tombstone setups or anything really that is not um, something that single part multiple fixture flow is not applicable to for some reason. So let's talk about setup one. I have a stock model that's based off of a solid that I've drawn on level two here. So if we look at the solid, we've got this nice drawn solid and, and I've broached the splines on the center of this piece already. So that's what I want to start with for my milling operations. So with the stock model here, I'm just referencing that model to create the stock model and to key off all my other operations. So then I have an intermediate stock model and then all my operations that reference that and I have an ending stock model that represents the state of the part after all my setup one orientations. Pretty basic, right? And there's nothing new here from the first video. Now, I'd like to transition this stock over to setup two. Here in setup two, I've got this, this opti rough that's going to do the opposite side and clean up material, but I have to somehow tell it what stock is left from setup one. So how do I get this stock model flipped over and over here? The way we're going to do this is by using the actual stock plane transform option up here. Now in the first video, I left this off and I said, we, we're not going to use this. We don't want to apply a transform. So what we want to do is transform this stock in X and then flip it over to the other side. The way we do that is by using planes specifically set up for the stock transform. So here I have my setup one origin and I've set it up at the Z top of the part in the center of this bore. Then I have a setup two origin, which is actually my G55 in the machine. But then look, I've got a setup two stock coordinate system. It's referencing that same key point, which is the top of the bore on the profile side, but now it's flipped over to match the actual part orientation in the second setup. This is key. This is essentially the handle that we're going to use to transform the model from the first setup to the second setup. So we're, we're picking a key point and we're staying constant and we're creating a new plane in the same key point at the new orientation. So let's do that. Let's move my insertion point down to setup two and I'll make a new stock model and my reference here is going to be setup one ending stock. And I'll call this setup two starting stock. Now I choose the plane to apply the transform. And I, I can pick any plane here, but what I want to do is choose that setup two stock plane. And I'll say OK. And here we go. So we used the difference in those planes from setup one to setup two stock as the transformation matrix for the stock to get it over to the second setup. 
So you can actually zoom in here and see that we've got a little rest material left over in all these contours because it looks like we contoured it with a bowl end mill and there's a slight radius there. So if we change this dynamic OptiRough to reference one other operation and we choose setup to starting stock, let's recalculate that. Awesome. So now I'm just doing the cleanup passes where the bull and milf failed to clean up the area because of the radius. And then I'm cleaning up the center bores that had an entry but didn't have the actual perimeter cleaned up. And I'm intelligently entering from air to do so. And I'm only going as deep as I need to because the rest of the stock is cleaned up. So that's transforming stock within the same uh, machine group. But what if you started this part out on a lathe instead? Let's look at that. So I've got this ST20 setup machine group. And let me turn off all of my setup2 stuff. And we'll just look at the part here. And we'll turn on stock display. And I'll move my insertion point into the lathe group. So here in the lathe group, I'm actually using the solid model again as my initial stock. And you can see it recognized that I had the bore complete. But I have to clean out material on the disk. So I've got my lathe face and lathe rough. And then I've got a resultant model of here's the end result on the lathe that maybe now I take to the mill and then continue to pop the holes in and the actual gear tooth profile. So now I need to get this stock model into my lathe or my mill machine group and transfer from lathe to mill. So I'll move my insertion point back over into the mill group and I want to look at this mill starting stock. So the stock model I'm going to reference, rather than being the actual solid body, I'm going to reference the lathe end result stock. And here, what I need to do is I need to match the lathe setup plane. Because remember, if I transform it into any other plane than what the stock was created in, that's applying the transformation between planes. And I, I don't want to transform the material yet. Uh, because the mill origin happens to be the same as the lathe origin, um, just with uh, D and uh, Z rather than an XYZ. So let's check out of that and let's regenerate this stock model. And so now this is my starting stock for lathe. And I've just transferred my stock between machine groups and this is all linked. So if I ever go back and I change my lathe roughing and that changes what I actually cut or leave for stock, it's going to dirty up the mill operations and say, hey, you need to update this so the mill operations know exactly what to remove from here on out. So that's awesome. I'll come down here and I once again need to apply the same stock plane in the mid ops in this mill stock model. So I'm still referencing starting stock, but I'm just switching it over to the lathe setup stock plane. And I'll regenerate this OptiRough. And now instead of having the core that whole disk down, it's going to recognize only the stock that the lathe ops left, which would be the pocketed areas and then that tooth profile. And there we go. 
So now let's generate the last setup one stock model. Again, I'm going to switch my plane to that lathe setup plane I've been using to carry my stock through all these operations. And that's op one done. Now let's move on to setup two. What happens if I just try to regenerate setup two right now that I've linked all my setup ones back to that lathe plane so that I'm correctly referencing the stock orientation? Look here, I've, I'm 90 degrees off if I just regenerate setup two without changing anything. Why am I 90 degrees off? Because there's an orientation difference between the lathe setup where I need to be on that XY plane uh, for the lathe origin versus my mill setup. So you can see that 90 degree work coordinate difference. So I've got the, the key points still the same, right? It's at the center top of the profile of the part, but the rotation's off. So all I have to do is edit this setup to stock plane. Remember, this plane only exists to help me rotate the stock model around. There is no other reason for it to exist. It's not referenced in a, um, a work offset, a G54, 55 anywhere. I'm just using it as a handle, per se, to drag my stock model around the screen to different areas of vices, tombstones, whatever. So I'll rotate set up to stock 90 degrees and I'll regenerate that stock model. And now I've got the correct orientation to lead into set up 2. The important thing to remember with this, and let's just turn on all these levels so we can see the vices again, is that when you reference a solid body as your starting stock, you are referencing the position of that solid at world origin, top, 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 in the file. So if you start with a model, you must always apply a transform that gets the model from its position in world top to somewhere else in the file. And I might have to move around the XYZ of this setup to stock plane to match what I want to see out of the stock transform. I've made this easier on myself because a setup one origin is right where the top origin is. This can get a little more complicated if your setup one origin is out in space at some random XYZ number because then you have to create these planes to reflect that um, deviation from world zero to, to move your stock model around. I think this is worth the time it takes to set up because this is all interlinked now and it's all referenced properly. But if you don't want to do that or this is getting too complex for your needs, you can always, always save out a stock model at any point as an STL or a PMesh and then just move it wherever you want in the actual file. So I could create a new level here and call it uh, 500 stock as PMesh. I'll turn everything off and I'll save out the lathe stock model. So what I have here is an entity now on level 500 that I can move and orient and place in space wherever I want to continue on with fixturing and cutting against in opti roughs, etc. And I don't have to worry about creating those planes and maintaining the plane link relationship. For large programs where you've got uh, maybe dozens or even hundreds of operations, 
it's actually a good thing to break the link to previous operations sometimes so that your stock models farther down in the toolpath tree uh, don't have to rely on little changes you're making up top to um, essentially regenerate every single time you want to do something with this stock model. That wraps up our extensive look at stock models. Thanks Wayne and Matt Maher for sending in those questions. If you're an educator and you have a Mastercam question, be sure to email education at mastercam.com to see it answered in a video like this. Until next time, thank you for teaching with Mastercam.